Hi, Katie Fowler here. Welcome to the rabbit hole. I want to talk about a brand new class I've put together that I'll be teaching for the first time at Empty Spool Seminar Session 2 at a Silamar Conference Center which is one of the most beautiful places on the face of the planet, right on the Pacific coast on the Monterey Peninsula. The class is called Fearless Mandala, Design, Draft, and Delight. In the class, we're gonna draft and paint and color little unique mandalas. This is doable, I promise that it is, and I'm gonna walk you through a few of the steps. So the class is very simple. We start with this grid fabric that I've designed and I'll have four of these grids for everyone in the class, in a five day class. And I bring all the templates. I'm gonna start with a just a plain old drafting circle template. And I've chosen this size. I'm lining it up with the grid fabric. And I'm gonna use a Cigna silver pen to start it doesn't really matter because oftentimes the pen mark disappears when we start adding color. The nice part about the grid fabric is after we have the circle, it's going to keep us lined up for what we want to add next. And I'm just going to put a couple of these little paisleys. I don't worry about it being perfect because it never is. In my paint layer stitch class, uh, the motto is embrace the blob. It's a little harder to embrace the blob with a mandala. It really doesn't matter if it's perfect because it because you made it. Here you can see the grid on the fabric a little bit and how it's just going to keep me help keep me round. I don't worry too much if I stay exactly round or not. I bring, I think I've got six or seven sheets of these templates. I'm gonna use the grid fabric because it lines up pretty close to the petals, but not exactly. I'm gonna go around that little flower shape. Again, you know, I'm not, I'm being careful, but I'm not stressing out if my pen bobbles or I skip on the template or whatever, because truly I promise when we add color to this, the silver pen will just disappear into the color. Something that I stress in all of my classes, whenever you're mark making on fabric, it's important to heat set, heat set, heat set. So after I do every little section, I heat set with a hot iron. You'll notice I put a drop cloth over the top of it. I love this product, it's Derwent Inktense Pencils. I'm gonna set them with aloe, just from the drugstore. Derwent pencils are water-soluble colored pencils. They're different from regular water-soluble colored pencils because the binder <clears throat> is an ink binder. So when you release it with the aloe gel or just get it damp with the aloe gel, it becomes permanent. A regular color pencil with a watercolor binder will not be permanent no matter how many times you heat set it. That is why you see watercolor paintings always under glass. But these intense pencils have an ink binder so that um, when I hit it with the aloe gel, it becomes permanent on the fabric. Another thing I love about these is you can blend them beautifully. So I wanna do a little shading around my flower shape. I'm gonna put a little bit of red in there next to the yellow. Now here comes the part that's magic. I always like to go, oh, when I hit the um, ink tents with the aloe gel. Use a tiny little paintbrush. Dip a little bit of it in the aloe. I don't want too much on my brush and that ink tense just comes alive. It stops looking like colored pencil and begins to look like a really beautiful, vibrant paint. I bring several different kinds of markers. These are some of my favorite. They're uh, Fabric Mate chisel tip markers. Obviously, they're formulated for fabric. 
They're very easy to control. I'm just going right over the top of the silver pen. This is a different brand of fabric marker that I like. This is a Mar Marvy fabric marker. And you can see I'm going outside of the lines a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Really, to me, the most important part of this process is not the finished, there I went out of the lines again, not the finished product, but um, the, the joy in doing it. I just love picking out what color I'm gonna do next. I never plan ahead. So I just kind of start in the middle and build my way out, which actually starting in the middle and building your way out is the traditional way to make a mandala. One of the fun things about um, people love about my class is that I bring all these different materials that you can try and experiment with some of them you're gonna really like, some of them you won't care if you ever see them again in your life. But rather than have me have you buy all this stuff, I bring every color of every supply. And uh, you can try them all. You can pick the colors that you like or pick the supplies that you like or never do this again. Just enjoy the, the time in the class. This is a compass that I, it's a construction compass actually. They're not expensive. I um, buy them at Home Depot and everyone in the class will have one of these. I like to use it every once in a while just to keep me round, keep me close to centered. That's about how big I'm gonna do the circle. I'm gonna tighten it and then just use it like a plain old compass. I'm gonna use the tea juice marker again do some green dots. I'm using the grid fabric to help guide where I'm putting the dots. I'll be debuting this class at Empty Spool Seminar in Session 2, which is March 15th through the 20th at the Asilomar Conference Center on the Monterey Peninsula. Truly a beautiful spot. If you've never been, put it on your bucket list. It's worth it. I'd love to come teach this class to your quilt guild or to your retreat. And as Alex Anderson says, we quilters do get around. So I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.